You can look at the constantly changing labels of different subcategories of mountain bike as a really confusing way of trying to pigeonhole a bike into where it should sit. Or you can look at it as a really useful way of instantly knowing what that bike's intended to do and what it's going to be good for. But how do you know if it's an enduro bike, a trail bike, cross country bike, a down country bike that's the right bike for you? Well, if you're in the market for a new bike, there's two bikes here that are really close together. In fact, I think they cross over quite a lot. The trail bike and the down country bike. And how do you choose which one is right for you? The bikes we're looking at today are the Orbea Occam and the Canyon Lux, a trail bike and a down country bike. Let's start with the Lux. So, slightly confusingly, this is my Lux, and it's not the new, brand new Lux Trail, the Rich Road on his epic Cambrian Way ride. Uh, this is an original Lux, but this is one that I have down country. So, I've put a shorter stem, now 60mm wider bars, 760, sort of my standard, and it's got 110mm fork on the front as well, 100mm travel on the rear, so it is slightly down country. That Lux Trail ups those travels by 10 mil each end, so 120 fork, 110 mil travel on the rear. Uh, slightly extended reach and slightly slacker geometry. Other than that, the chassis looks virtually identical to this one. Carbon fiber frame, RockShox SID fork up front, Deluxe Ultimate Shock on the rear. Lightweight wheels, I've got the E13 XCX carbon wheels paired with Vittoria tires with the XC race construction. So super lightweight, keeping that rotating mass to the minimum. 110 mil travel fork, 100 mil on the rear, 29er obviously. Head angle is 69.5, seat angle 74. Wheelbase is 1129 millimeters in the medium and it weighs 11.64 kilograms. Well, there's a Down Country bike. What about the riding gear? Well, I've described Down Country as sort of cross country for downhillers in the past. Hope you get what I mean there. People that love bombing around the woods or going up and down hills super fast on a cross country bike that's mega efficient, but also really enjoy riding the downhills. And I like to be kitted up for that. So I wear my cross country shoes, super lightweight, feel just as efficient as the bike. You can wear Lycra or tight baggies, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Breathable kit, sort of, you're ready for an athletic bit of exercise. Helmet with loads of ventilation and some XC glasses. The Orbea Occam. A trail bike for sure. Orbea say these are built for big days out in the mountains, riding from sun up till sundown, and bike park laps that don't always include an uplift. So definitely a trail bike. Again, carbon fiber frame and wheels. It's 140 mil of travel both ends now. Bars, my preference, 760 mil wide, but now we start to see the bigger differences. So a short stem on this, 35 millimeters. Geometry-wise, head angle is slackened out quite a lot from the Down Country bike, 66 degrees. Seat angle, 77, and the wheelbase, 1194 millimeters for a medium, so five centimeters longer than my medium Down Country bike. Trail riding gear is likely to look like this. What you lose in climbing speed, you gain in descending speed. So that's when kit for more protection, bit of looseness on the bike definitely comes into play. I start to look for sort of trail like shoes, a bit more protection, smash into rocks. Some knee pads, breathable kit as normal, and a helmet with a bit more protection because radness is likely to increase. Glasses, performance, and style.
140 mil trail bike, it is definitely never going to climb as well or as quick and as efficiently as a 100 mil cross country bike. But they do really impress me. Like, yes, you give away some efficiency, but man, they do bomb up the climbs as well. Conversely, actually, the down country bikes do surprise me sometimes. I forget how good they are at going downhill. I think you sort of reach the limit more of the tires and the wheels than anything. Like they can be really fast, but when stuff starts getting too rough for them, that's when you start risking puncturing and damaging tires. And that's the big difference I find is like the tires, the grip. Yes, they're a bit heavier and a bit sort of more, well, less nimble, shall I say. But the payoff you get on these bikes with these tires, trail bikes, shall I say, on the downhills is just so much more grip and confidence. Definitely some of the differences between the bikes do come down to the geometry. Even like the setups on the Dane Country bike, we've got the longer stem, steeper angles. It does feel super agile, even on the flatter trails, not just on the climbs, on the flatter trails, it's really quick to move the bike around. Whereas the 35 mil stem and the slacker angles on the trail bike feel great going down and or up on the way up, just definitely not as agile. One of the biggest differences, I think, on the way the bike, you know, if, if they feel to ride, comes down to the wheel sets. So on the Dan Country bike, got super light wheels, E13 XCX race carbon wheels, which are 1,520 grams for the pair. Still got a 28 mil internal rip, so uh, width, so still trail friendly for the bigger tires. Got the Barzo XC race tire on the front at least with the aggressive tread. So good down country choice. You know, you're not going super fast, super lightweight. Still 660 grams, so very lightweight for the pair. The down country wheels and tires coming in a total of 2,840 grams. Whereas on the trail bike, I've got the FSA gradient wheels. So again, still carbon, but they're definitely a bigger build. They're wider, they're asymmetric. You've now got a 30 millimeter depth and a 35 mil width compared to the 28 mil on the down country wheels. So these now weigh 1,736 grams. Plus you've got the bigger, chunkier tires, you've got the Vittoria Mazza tires, a trail build, a 950 grams each. So the total of the trail wheel set and tires comes in at 3,636 grams compared to the 2,840 grams on the down country bike. <laughs> Yeah, of course, the rest of the bike, the Dan Country bike is lighter, the frames, the pedals, the, the components on it. But really, it's that rotating mass that does feel different. You know, these wheels and tires feel super zippy on the flatter trails. You're absolutely, feels like you can just change the bike, the direction of the bike super easily. Again, the payoff for that is on the rougher stuff. You just have to be more careful. It's a lighter tire, it's going to rip. Whereas on the trail bike, you've got, you know, 300 grams uh, extra per tire. And actually that does make a big difference to, you know, you've got more rubber on there, you've got more grip, you've just got more ability to smash through stuff. So it's a payoff in rotating mass, but you do get a lot of grip and protection in that tire. So what really is the intended use of a down country bike? Well, I've used my Canyon Lux for some epic rides like the BC Bike Race, where you do want a super lightweight cross country bike that's also forgiving for the tech trails, and to be honest, for your body. A super light cross country bike here could beat you to a pulp. So you want a bike that can take the trails comfortably, but also with good handling for the techie trails. So that is where the bigger fork, shorter stem and wider bars come in really useful. The spectrum of bikes is amazing, and with some tweaks to what you've already got, you can really make a difference to where it really shines. But it has to be said, you can do so much on either of these bikes, it amazes me. It really comes down to what you want from your bike and your terrain. You might live somewhere super rocky, but enjoy being underbiked a bit, as it feels so efficient, you just realize you have to go steady on the tires a bit. The downcountry bike might be for you, or you might want one bike that can do everything, the trail bike. 
set of lighter tyres for your smooth local trails and some dual plies for the occasional bike park trip. Bike travel is still one of the biggest differences. In years gone by, the more travel you added, the sort of the efficiency of the bike would plummet. And whilst those changes are still there, you will still feel it. It's just much, much more than it used to be. So what is it for you, down country or trail bike? Let us know in the comments down below. Me, for my personal type of riding, I think if I had to pick one, it would be the trail bike. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoy this video.